This is Jonah with Sweet Honey Code, and we're going to dive into Shopify Theme Design 101. So today we're going to go to the Dawn theme. So throughout this whole series, I'm going to work through customizing the Dawn theme for an online store. Everything you learn through the series can be applied to other themes, although the settings may slightly vary, but the idea and concepts will be the same. From our Shopify dashboard, make sure you have the online sales channel. Next, you go to themes and then click on customize. To get started, we're going to take a look at the theme settings before we change any layouts anywhere on this theme. And that should be the first place you start. In the theme settings, we're going to notice several things. There's a theme tab and there's app embeds. App embeds is a little advanced. We're not going to dig into that just yet. By going to the theme settings, you can actually go through and start setting up what the visual look for your brand may be. So by going to the first section, which is colors, I can actually go through and set these colors. So what's happening here? First, we have the so solid button label. The solid button label is solid, but what is the color of the text? So this will act, be used as the accent color for any label that is solid. So that gives it the white text. And then there's accent one, which is the strange code. So the strange code you're seeing throughout here is what's called hex code. It's a color code used throughout websites. You don't have to know these codes, but if you click on any of these colored circles, you will get a colored picker. So from the color picker, here is where you can start choosing your colors. Now there's another neat feature within Shopify and that is currently used. So as you start picking out key colors for your theme, then it will remember those recent colors up to about eight recent colors. This helps you quickly go back to the colors you have selected in previous spots throughout the theme. As we go down, for example, I can actually set up the background buttons to be gradient rather than a solid. So the idea here is to go through and set your style. So we have secondary colors. With secondary colors, this is usually used for, as we can see here, text. This is the color of the text throughout the store as well. So if I change this to maybe a purple, I will quickly note, notice where the secondary text is being used. As you saw, all my text now is turned to purple. So these text areas are using this color. So if I go back again and go back to black or an off shade of black now is set back. And as we keep going along, outline button, same thing. Anytime there's a button that isn't solid, for example, this could be an outline button, but looks like there's a little bit more stylizing happening with the theme. And that's something else to note. Sometimes when there's a color here, there may be a style change in another part of the theme. A lot of this comes down to the theme designer, the one who developed the theme and their design choices they made along the way. As you get more proficient at designing your store, you can explore something called CSS, which is a way of overriding styles throughout your store. We will explore that in a future video. So typography. Typography is the area of changing what the font looks like. I can go through and change out the font throughout the site by reading each section and changing out the font. You want to make sure whatever font you have is legible. Think about those who may not be able to read it well. That will help you with your design decision. Plus you can use a font scale so maybe you do want the font a little bigger but you won't go too small as they are trying to encourage you to use proper design flow here. Layout. So layout has to deal with how this theme responds to certain conditions. For example, page width is 1200 pixels and it's okay if you don't know what 1200 pixels are, but 1200 pixels is usually the width of a mo the most modern desktop now. So the bigger the page width I go, the more likely it's going to stay this full width on the different screens that are out there. There's even vertical space. So the vertical space allows me to set the spacing throughout the different sections in my theme. So maybe I do want a little more space. So I have the slider to make more space along with the grid buttons. This is the style of most of the buttons on my store. 
Now it may take a little bit just to see where this is affecting. So let's change one and see what this affects. Let's thicken the border there. As expected, it is stylizing these buttons. And if I go into a product, it's stylizing these buttons. And I actually like that because it brings a little more attention to the add to cart. I can look at the different settings there and see what I like. Variant pills. So this may be confusing at first, especially if you don't have a brand or a store that's using Variant. So variant pills are right here, at least with this theme, where, for example, this coffee mug, it has an 11 ounce and 15 ounce variant. Well, this stylizing will help me change the style for these, this pill design. And then we have inputs. So inputs has to do with anything like quantities where you have to input information. So here I can, again, change the thickness for the input box just to bring a little more attention to it, or even a slight shadow cards. So with cards, this has to do with the grid. This is considered a card. So with the card, I can change how these look. So for example, in this theme, I can change it from a standard, which has no stylizing, to a card, which looks more like that. And of course, I can go through here and adjust if it's going to have any type of stylizing here. So maybe I do want the text centered. I can go through here and choose background round, background two. Oh, so what's going on here? So remember how we were setting earlier up here the colors for accent one, accent two. So by changing to accent two, now it's pulled in that accent two color I was exploring earlier or inverse it. That's looking good. Content containers. What is, what is content containers? Well, these are most likely affecting the areas where content is seen, for example, here or even on the home page or pages A thickness border should draw quick attention to where this is stylizing. There it is. So there's a content container right there and that actually looks pretty cool. And right there. That doesn't look cool there. Then there's media. So media would have to deal with images and other media. So right now, although it says there is a border, I don't quite see a border. So let's go to a product here. And again, there's not quite a border. It says one pixel here. So if I make that pixel really big just to draw attention to it, there it is. And actually, that's a really neat style. If I was selling a lot of art pieces and I wanted it to look a little more framed, that's actually not too bad. But I think we can go without the border altogether. Drop downs and pull out pop ups. So drop downs would be anywhere there is a drop down menu and drawers. Drawers may be a hard one to see at first because you only see it when you switch to mobile and click on the menu that pops up here. And that is considered a drawer. And badges. So badges would be, for example, if I go back to my home page here, the sales tag is a badge. So I can actually say where I want that sell tag position here. Now, having a look at this, my sell tag actually isn't as clear. So I will definitely want to choose a really good accent color to highlight that. So icons, we're not quite seeing here, but they are in a few spots here. So if I go into a product, the icons would be like this. So what type of colors icons? Well, I can actually go through here and just change the color for the icons to bring more attention to them. And social media. So the social media section is where I would input my social media. URLs. Be sure to follow the format. So for example, for Twitter, you would use the full Twitter URL for your profile link, as well as Facebook and Pinterest and so forth. So they give you an example here to give you an idea of what to put in here, that it is the full URL, not just your username and search behavior. So here I can customize my search behavior used throughout the store. So do I want the price to be shown? That makes sense to me. So if I wanted to test this out, type in a search. We're going to type in coffee. There I can see prices right away or hide the prices. So let's try that again. There we go. Product suggestions is great. What it will do is it uses kind of like Google in this terms. It's using a vague term to go, you know what, you're typing the word coffee. Here's some other products that is probably related to coffee. And the reason for this is, is now this becomes a quick action rather than I'm going to be sent through five pages of results. If you see the option for enable product suggestions, I highly recommend it. And a fav icon. Now the fav icon may not
be as clear to you what in the world that is. But if you look up here in the web browser, you see how the shop, there's a Shopify shop bag. Well, this fav icon will replace that for your online store. Now, you may still see the Shopify shop bag in your admin. When everyone else visits your store on the online store, they'll see whatever fav icon you have. And we're going to cover this more in detail about graphics for your theme and currency format format, depending on what currency you're you're targeting, it's best to show the format, for example, the dollar sign where it's needed. It just helps the brain to see what the price is. Without the currency code, it gets a little more vague. Plus, it can quit, it not only communicates a dollar amount, but what currency it is, especially if you have a multi-currency store. So if you're only sticking to local, then you can definitely clear that up just to clear up visual clutter. And of course, checkout. Now the checkout we'll cover in more details in a future video but the settings are there as well. And then theme style. Now with this theme, there's only one theme style, but if you had another theme with more styles, then you would be able to select it. But it's important to note that whatever stylization, stylization you just applied will get lost if you change your theme style. So you may wanna consider actioning that first before you go through and tweaking all your settings. Once you're done, you would click the save button to apply your saves to your theme settings, and then you're ready to go. This concludes this walkthrough of the theme settings for the online store for the Dawn theme, and I'll see you in the next video.